that's the biggest piece because then you can tell the right story. So that's where the whole customer service comes into play is communicating uh, the right message yeah. to the right audience. Hi everybody, this is Josh Becerra from Agurian. I am excited to introduce my guest for how I work today, Susan Rylance. Susan's a business marketing growth strategist who has helped both SMBs and Fortune 500 companies build their marketing and digital teams, allowing them to focus on their overall business strategies and goals. She's a performance-driven, focused, and trusted leader who drives top-line revenue while keeping an eye on the bottom line. Susan, I'm super excited to have you today. Thank you. Excited to be here, Josh. Appreciate you yeah. having me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So when we prep for this, you told me a story going all the way back to your first job as a 17-year-old in your early days in retail management where it was all about people being customer facing. So first, just tell the audience a little bit about your story, how you got to where you are today. But secondly, I'd love to hear what some of those early days in retail being customer facing taught you and how those lessons continue to influence your work and how you think about your work today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a big, big package, but I will um, do my best to be concise. So yes, I did start early in my career in fast food and then jumped into retail. And, and if you've ever worked in fast food, um, you definitely learn what it's like to be customer facing. And I was taught that, you know, you have to be present right in front of the customer, understand their needs. And so I just got the sense of um, that number one in fast food, the quick need, but also what it's like to work with a team because I was quickly promoted to a supervisor and I was leading people that were much older than me and thrown yeah, into something crazy. that I had probably no business doing. <laughs> um, so they must have seen something in you. They, yeah, they did. And it's interesting. But what I learned there is I didn't get a lot of training. I was I um, jumped into a lot of things and, and it you know, taught me that, hey, maybe I want to train my employees a little bit more. Um, yeah. But it also allowed me to do things and take on a little bit more challenges that I was uncomfortable with. So that that was one. And then fast forwarding into um, my first job out of college, I was in retail management. So stayed in customer facing retail management and, yeah. you know, a little bit more experience under my belt at that time. And what I learned is being in front of the customer really is building a relationship. I got to understand them. And if I truly understood them and asked them about, um, you know, their personal life, you know, to a point that you can and just relate to them, I would be able better able to help them. And I'll, I'll just give an example. Uh, sure. I was working in uh, retail management at, at Macy's at Mall of America early in the days when, when it was first there. And I had a customer who, was, who had just come in to tell me her story that she was a photographer for National Geographic. And wow. number one, I thought that was pretty cool because I like photography. It was um, something that I enjoyed. But the other thing she did was she was an underwater photographer taking mm -hmm. pictures of the whales as they were feeding. And so what I learned is I can relate to these people. If I listen to their story and truly yeah. understand, then I can relate to them. And it then helped me better meet her needs of what was she looking for? Um, how would I delight her to make sure that she was happy and then would be able to come back and tell other people. And so yeah. it was relating, um, understanding that they're real people and that they're there to for a reason and how can right. we truly help them so that was um number one of what what it helped me do and how i take that forward is just everything i do i try to remember those days that if you're in front of that customer how can we relate to them and right. how can we make sure we're continuing to, to delight people and there's many times um that you can think about you know, some of the negative things that, hey, they're, um, you know, they're maybe not being the way you want, but they, something might have happened in their day. And what can we do to change their day sure. and in turn change your day and be more positive yep. about it? Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, I think anytime you're like bringing that kind of 
relational you kind of a little bit of vulnerability empathy mm -hmm. to any kind of conversations you're having be it with customers or fellow teammates right or in your personal life right mm -hmm. that's that's where i think you have success yeah so so that's that's super interesting like how at even such an early age uh you are kind of unpacking these things and i know that after retail management you kind of went on to do uh, bigger things. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about that side of your story? Yeah, absolutely. And and those early days certainly were foundational in helping me as I went on to the next phase. So I w was in retail management and then I went into corporate America in this world called staffing, um, which I didn't know anything about. Um, I was with a, a company for about eight, eight months, nine months, and they decided to open a new division, which was a creative and marketing division. And that was intriguing to me. I, I you know, was a little bit more on the creative side. I, I had a fashion um, degree, and so this got me a little bit closer. So um, the the leader asked me to come in and, and open up a new marketing creative uh, staffing company. And awesome. yeah, and and you know, looking back, I thought, wow, you know, I'm in my what early late twenties. Um, and I'm, you know, helping start up a new business within a business. And, yeah. um, you know, I look back now and I'm like, oh, who, who let me do that? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of amazing how you, you found opportunity. I mean, obviously you have something special that people see in you that are like this, this person has skills, let's take full advantage. But it seems like every kind of step. Um, you've been put in a situation where it's like, let's challenge yeah. Susan to figure this out for us. So. Right. And that, and that's a good point. Um, because I do like a challenge. Um, I like to mm -hmm. feel a little uncomfortable and I think it does go back to that early days of being put into a supervisor position and being uncomfortable and not knowing. And so I do think those early days allowed me to take on new risks for myself and be yeah. a little bit less risk averse um, yep. than than maybe somebody else. And uh, you know, when I look at the the entrepreneurship role, where it was a little bit risk averse because I was um, I didn't have to come up with my own money. However, starting a yeah. new business, um, I had to be able to perform in order to get yeah. what I wanted um, from a compensation. But also, I had now a team. And we had to build out a new brand, a new organization that was a little bit different than um, what the, the parent organization had. Yeah. So, you know, well, I do want to unpack yeah. a little bit of your entrepreneur experience in yeah. a little bit. But like, so now we're in kind of your mid 20s and you're in this staffing role, this intrapreneurship role. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Yeah. So what what kind of happened next for you in your career, like to get to where you are today now? Yeah. So I um, like I said, I started that, uh, op, you know, that new division. I was then later asked to lead other divisions across the country um, by the CEO. And so I had then was leading for different brands across the country with I think seven different law offices and locations. And I had to really, it goes back to understanding people on several yeah. different fronts. I had to understand not only the customers and the diverse, um, the diverse customers we had from different locations, from Texas to the East Coast in the Midwest. And you had to understand each one of those personas. But I also had to understand my employees and how do we grow a business? How can we motivate each other? how do i use each of their strengths to the advantage to help grow the business and then i also had to work with peers across the organization so that we could co-collaborate and help each other both you know across the organization and up up to the organization um yeah. later i was then asked to lead marketing for the parent company and the seven different organizations within that and um, that was another challenge for me along the way that yeah. i um, I was wondering why are they coming to me asking me to lead marketing when I have never led marketing before? And, um, you know, they did see something and maybe it was the perseverance that I have. Mm -hmm. Um, and also a little bit of risk. And I just, I think what can it hurt to try something new? And I also knew the organization and the leaders. And so I was comfortable there and, and I had worked with marketers, um, 
you know, much of the, my career at that point, and I was helping them build their teams. And so all I did was um, built my own team internally yeah. and have that strategy and use the people's strength around me to basically implement the marketing strategy um, plans for the companies. Uh, fast forward, the company was then acquired and mm -hmm. I um, was asked to reduce headcount. And I, I, I think the team that we had could do the job and so i negotiated my departure and then went to a smaller company that was essentially in a turnaround phase or a growth phase and i joined them as a sales and marketing leader um, had to bring out a new brand uh, expanded to new markets did that for a couple of years and then i i had the opportunity to do my own thing meaning be a truly entrepreneur studying my own consulting business. So you can yeah. see this evolution that I've learned along the way of, um, I was a little bit less risk averse at that time. I had a little bit more confidence with the people around me that were mm -hmm. just championing me along the way because I didn't always have that confidence, but the people around me had the confidence in me and that's yeah. what made the difference. Yeah, so, I mean, I think that is super important to kind of have some of those people who maybe see something in you that you don't necessarily see in yourself and that they have the kind of willingness to um, put those opportunities in front of you and you obviously yeah. like knocked them down. So, uh, <laughs> so that just feels great. Let's talk yeah. a little bit about that uh, entrepreneur mm -hmm. kind of experience that you had. I just think that's really cool. You know, I've, I'm an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. We started a service-based business and have grown it. Um, but being an entrepreneur, I think is very, in a lot of ways, similar. So talk a little bit more about what that role looked like and then what you learned about like building and growing a business from that experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it is similar, um, in a sense, and again, a little bit more less risky, but at that time, what I was learning is, um, I, there was a market out there that I had to um, appease to and I was understanding that we were building our own brand within mm -hmm. the bigger business and we had, we didn't at that time we weren't talking about vision mission values um, okay. as much as we are today and yeah. so we were creating without knowing that we were creating our own vision mission values based on how we showed up that um, how we wanted to provide thought leadership, what we wanted to provide. And we, we talked about two sets of clients. At that time, it was a staffing company. And we had our, well, three sets of clients. The customer, meaning the end client, where, where we worked with the, the talent who provided those services, and then internally. And how did we make sure that we were winning from all three of those? And so from an entrepreneur, we did get some guidance around, hey, we want to make sure that um, we're focused on all three sets of clients. And so I got that guidance and I, I had coaching. So I think about it as an internal coach that I didn't have to pay for. So that's sure. what the different the difference was from entrepreneurship versus entrepreneurship. It, it was kind oh of God. internal coaches, yeah, which yeah, helped yeah. guide me and teach me um, when I was an entrepreneur later. Yeah, so. for sure. So, you know, like one of the things that I've, I'm here from you and I believe to be true is like you, you really are um, team oriented, right? So mm -hmm. even all the way back to when you're 17 years yeah. old and they're putting you in charge of a team to when you are building teams and maybe, a, you know, seven locations across country, the country and looking at like this kind of how to figure out how those teams collaborate with one another. You know, you're obviously very reliant on effective communication in order to do that. Um, I feel like one of the things that I see is marketers kind of struggle with communicating up and down and across. And it seems like you have a lot of experience with communication and building teams and kind of cross collaboration at different levels. So what kind of advice would you have for marketers who are struggling with this, you know, communicating or creating cross collaboration among teams? Yeah, that and that's something that I've certainly learned and getting trying to get better at every day. Um, yeah. But it was holding regular communication cadence meetings with each one of those. And so it might be less 
when you're managing up, you might have a monthly communication cadence meeting with them and your peers across it might be um, twice a month and then your, your direct reports more regularly, whether it's um, weekly or monthly, but being ready and coming to those conversations with some, what are the goals that you want to accomplish mm -hmm. together? What are the business goals and how do we work together to accomplish those goals? and creating that cadence in, in of that, but also what story can you bring so that everybody understands? So yeah. for example, um, you know, and I've, I've got some really great guidance from um, some of my peers over the years when I was in a leadership position that I was reporting to the CEO, um, some of those things is you have to remember that it needs to be short and concise right. in terms of communication. So communicating up it's you're changing a little bit of your communication style when you're communicating mm -hmm. across your organization it's a little bit different your communication is there the stories have to be there but also what's in it for them to be able to communicate with you on that regular right. basis and so there's just little tricks of communicating a little bit differently with each of those and then communicating down should be a very regular basis um, mm -hmm. and almost on the spot but where's their time to get to know the person as well? And that was the other yeah. thing is, how do we get to know each other? Right. That's the biggest piece because then you can tell the right story. So that's where the whole customer service comes into play is communicating uh, the right message yeah. to the right audience. Yeah, yeah, I definitely think thinking about your audience and then like building those like personal trusted relationships in yeah. all directions so that, yeah, you know, that you have like this thing in common. It's like going back to your kind of retail management story, right? If you right. can know that you have something in common with this National Geographic photographer, yeah. you can make that connection. And so how do you do that with your peers um, across the organization? How do you do that with people that are reporting to you? And then even how do you do that up above uh, you when you're reporting up? And I do think that uh, many times it can kind of the things that you have in common can be personal, but they can also be like common objectives within the organization, right? So if we Absolutely. have alignment on goals and that's what our com biggest commonality is, then we speak to that all the time. Right. And so that kind of opens people up to say like, okay, you get me, you know what I'm most interested in, right? The CEO yeah. has goals. Let's make sure that we're talking about those goals with them. Um, so anyway, yeah. I do like this idea of, uh, like making sure you understand who your audience is and then connecting with them around something that you have in common. Yeah. And that, I, I think you tipped on something right there because that is probably the most common reason why, um, you have disparate teams, um, mm -hmm. and marketing sometimes gets pit in the middle of that. It's because we're not finding the common goals in the business and we're not getting to know each other because we might have these um, altruistic ideas of somebody that really don't exist because we didn't get to know them as a person. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking about like getting to know people as yeah. a person, one of the things that you and I touched on in a previous conversation was that we both have used the strengths finders assessments with our teams. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure probably other things, you know, like Myers Briggs or DISC or whatever, but. Um, I'm just curious, you know, having knowing that you have used Strengths Finders assessments, what have you seen um, from using those types of assessments as a manager? Like, what's what's the value that you've seen from using those? Yeah, well, I could talk a really long time, but I'll be more concise. And I, yes, I have used Strength Finders um, as a really great communication tool, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. And I have looked at the other assessment tools and for some reason strength finders just really resonated with me and my teams yeah. and partly is uh, um i was i had a couple different teams one in chicago one that i had hired an employee and then one of the managers had taken over that um, business unit and so there was a little bit of a disconnect i hired him i got to know him personally so he's taken on a new leader or a new employee as a leader and he just he was struggling to communicate he said he questions everything i do 
he, you know, he thought he was questioning his authority. So I yeah. um, reached out to my business part, my HR business partner, and she recommended Strength Finder. So what it allowed us to do is understand the strengths that we have. And so the, the person I'm speaking about, his, one of his number one strengths is analytics. And what do yeah. we do as analysts? We seek to understand. We ask more questions in order to, you know, derive the right um, un, um, results or understand the results. So once we, as a team, went through that and shared the strengths of each person and what they meant, it was such a defining moment for the two of them. The manager's like, oh my gosh, he just needs more information to process. He's not questioning my authority. And they became the best buds ever and yeah, yeah. and it was such a great and successful integration of the two businesses um that they were leading so that that's an amazing success story but i also think there's other ways that we can use them as you know whether we're in marketing whether we're in sales or whatever whatever we're in but just understanding the strength as a whole and knowing mm -hmm. when they show up and how can we leverage each other's strengths because I don't have the same strengths as you, I'm guessing, but can we pair them together and then mm -hmm. really move forward? Um, and, and then the last thing I'll say on strength finders that I really appreciate is their strengths. And so many companies say, well, let's really improve your weaknesses. It's like, right. well, that's going to be a lot harder than if you leverage my strengths with Josh's strengths because he's got strengths that are my weaknesses. So why don't we leverage them together? And there's, again, I go about collaboration, but um, it's so amazing that you can use these strengths together to, instead mm -hmm. of putting so much effort and time on your weaknesses. Yeah, no, I love it. I love that your entire kind of ethos is around like people, it's around like, the way that you drive business success and outcomes is by like understanding yourself, understanding your teams, understanding your customers, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's like a high kind of priority on people. And I do think that in a lot of ways, that's when uh, companies excel is when they really do have a clear understanding of their customer, when they have a clear understanding of their customers kind of needs or challenges um, and can help them articulate like solutions to those things and that goes for customers as it does for teammates and leaders right right so um yeah i think it's really cool to hear you talk about you know how much the people side of business is important in driving results absolutely well one well, it's one and i'll just say one more thing to that that's interesting because we talked about the people and being in front of people that I learned early on with customer service but now we're in the world where uh, we're serving customers that we never see yeah and, and so now you talk about how do I create that experience for them in a digital fashion or whatever that is and now we talk about omni-channel because they might be in person one time and then they might be online or they you know we might be communicating through a chat and so that's a whole new complex piece of yeah. customer service today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's also really awesome when it all jives and works together. Like you can just kind of know when brands have it together and right. like you, no matter where you see them or they, where they show up, it always feels like the, the right thing. So um, yeah, omni-channel can be super powerful when done right and when done wrong, you've got kind of this scattered sense and not a really clear understanding of the company or its, you know, its values. Um, so anyway, I right. like that call out for sure. Yeah. So, so um, we're kind of coming to the end of our time here, but there is one question that I love to ask all of my guests. And that's just, uh, are there thought leaders, bloggers, podcasters, or authors that you've been paying attention to um, that you're reading or listening to? Yeah, yeah. So I um, I have an array that I listen to, so probably not one main thing, but I, lately I'm into more on the leadership and, and um, purpose type work. So uh, yeah. one of my favorite podcasts is On Purpose by Jay Shetty. Um, okay. He's got some amazing guests, um, but he also has some amazing insights um, just to help us with our purpose as yeah. well. Um, the Huberman Lab, another okay. 
interesting one. Those are really long podcasts, so you might need a couple hours in the car. Um, yeah. And and then I'll throw a couple locals in, and and uh, now now, Josh, your podcast. I'll be listening to that um, more often. All right. Let's go. Yes. But two <laughs> locals that I've really appreciated is Champions of Risk by Michael uh-huh. Kipkart. Um, she's, she's got some great guests on and, and that's about leadership and then superpower success, which is Keystone group. So, um, some locals that are my favorites that I listen yeah. to some, some national, and then just for fun is smartless. Nice. Love that. So I actually, we just, uh, filmed the how I work episode with the CEO of Keystone group. So they're, uh, uh- they're popping up on my podcast a number of Perfect. times. So there you go. That's awesome. Yeah, awesome. Well, Susan, this has been really fun. I really appreciate your time. Uh, I want to thank you so much for being here. And that'll do it for this episode of How I Work. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.